G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and I'm joined today by Flynn and we're going to chat a bit today about two things. Uh, the Apple M chips being vulnerable. So this is a very new thing coming out. So we're going to get right into that and we're also going to chat about the people search engines. So there was a uh, an issue where Mozilla, who's in charge of Firefox, they cut their connections with a company because they found that the company's CEO was running a bunch of people search engines, which is not good. But let's start it off with the Apple M chips. So, Flynn, do you want to give a bit of a background on uh, this vulnerability? Yeah, so it's a really, really, I suppose, serious one. It's not too exploitable as far as we know yet. So don't completely panic if you're an Apple user. Um, but basically, it's a it's a way that Apple M, I think it's the way that the M chips access memory. So it's an actual architectural uh, vulnerability with um, these chips. Yep. The reason why that's really, really bad is it's actually not patchable. Yeah. The only way that Apple can fix this, they can fix it with the next um, edition, which I think is supposed to come out sometime later this year. Yep. But... Apple cannot actually fix this problem. Yep. They can do workarounds such as like adding noise and stuff, which from a cyber perspective, adding noise is basically just obfuscating um, whatever is happening. So I'm not too sure how that would work with memory, but basically you'd be adding a lot of stuff. The problem is with that is that it would basically tank the functionality of these devices. It would make them a lot, lot slower. Um, so yeah, it's... Currently, right now, from what I'm seeing, to exploit this, you need to be able to put a particular uh, software on the device that deactivates um, the secu- the default security for Apple, yeah. which isn't completely, I wouldn't say, unexploitable mm. because you know how payloads work is they partic- particularly do you know a certain thing to then make a payload to send something in there. Yeah. But it's not like someone's not going. You're not going to log into your computer right now, and oh my god, the whole thing's been taken yeah. over. <laughs> so don't completely panic right now. But this is a vulnerability that's unpatchable, which is not something you hear too often when you no. hear something is unpatchable. Yeah. You usually when we say something, we will say, "Oh, we'll let you know if a patch comes out." Yeah. Um, we won't let you know if a patch comes out <laughs> for this one because unless Apple is going to. Uh, if there's either there's something we don't know and there is I'm pretty sure this is unpatchable because as we said it's an architectural issue but this is um, yeah if they're going to patch this it's a something that's going to tank the functionality and then it's still going to be there it's yeah. just going to be harder to exploit yeah so it's interesting because about two or three years ago was the first uh, iteration of these M chips so what it does is it puts the graphics and the computation like the CPU computation it puts it all in one chip so that the the time to travel, uh, the time that it takes for electrical signal signals and information to travel between the graphics card and the uh, and the computational processor, that is very, very, very small. It's like on the same chip. So it's able to run very quickly and do workstation tasks, so Photoshop and anything like that. It's able to run that very, very quickly, which is the whole uh, the whole point of it. Is, yeah. yeah, it's it's built so that this is meant to be fast. Yeah, it's why Apple devices are really, really good at certain tasks and then not as good as others. Exactly. Because as yeah. far as I'm aware, they don't actually really have GPU because the way this works. Right, okay. Um, as far as I'm aware, I may have to fact check that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, my understanding is that the, the all of the processing happens very proximity, like proximately, or I don't know if that's a word, in close proximity to each other. So it's able to run very quickly. Uh, that's the whole point of this architecture. So when they, you know, when there's a big vulnerability coming out from the from the architecture level, it, it's a, it's an issue because you know they can't. You might think, okay, well, why don't they just you know update the architecture? It doesn't really work like that because the whole way that the system runs is it runs on a like a, a it'd be like saying up oh, sorry, I was wrong. They do have GPU. They do. I, have don't GPU. I don't know. I don't know why I thought. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like saying um, to a to a company like MSI who makes graphics cards, oh, uh, they've got an issue in the way that their like, wires are connected on their uh, on their graphics yeah. card. Fix the way the wire. You, you know, unless you bring all of the computers 
back to the manufacturer, you can't fix it. Yeah, which is not going to happen. No, no. It's it's just the way they're built. Yeah. And it's the way that their their firmware functions. So yeah, you can't really patch that. Um like Flynn said, it doesn't mean that you need to worry and freak out because it doesn't seem overly exploitable through yeah, what you were saying. Just the way that the pointers are accessed. Could happen if someone installs software on it. Um, that's able to, you know, maybe even like dump memory or something. Yeah. But- so as far as I'm aware, as I said, by default, um, the software you would need to get onto the system gets blocked. Yeah. So you would need to actually um, find a workaround. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't um, unheard of. Obviously, that can be done. But you know, if you stay vigilant with the usual, you know, phishing stuff and not clicking on bad links, you should be safe. But it's something to be aware of. And, and this kind of stuff, you know, it might be easy to just in- instantly blame Apple because you don't like them. But whenever there's new innovations in software and firmware and hardware, this kind of stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, the way that they've built their chips on their new Macs for the last three years or whatever, it's new. It hasn't been really been done before. So we're always going to see stuff like this happening. Preferably, you're always going to hope that your software is vulnerable, your firmware, your architecture isn't, because then that way you can patch it. But it's just unfortunate. It's just a thing that happens. I'm sure if we go back 20 years ago to when first, uh, you know, PCs that you're able to build on your own using commercial parts, when they were coming out, there was probably certain vulnerabilities or whenever there was any new hardware being com- uh, coming out, there was some kind of unpatchable issue with them that they get better at over time and they are able to make m- more robust. But, you know... It- it's hard to blame Apple on this one. Yeah, it's it's very it's an oversight that wasn't obvious because you know how the M, this is the third iteration of M chips and also this was discovered by a team of seven academic researchers from universities across the US is what I'm reading. Yeah. So it's not like something that was obvious that Apple and was completely um, negligent of. No. Um, it it. It will be interesting seeing how Apple reacts to this. Yeah. If, um, you know, as I said, the chips are supposed to come out later this year from what I'm aware. I'm, I'm not sure if it's an easy fix. Uh, uh, I prob- doubt it. Uh, and, and it's probably just that they have to think of a different way to um, have the like, memory allocation done. Yeah. It's probably not a terribly difficult fix. It's probably going to take a lot of, you know, late nights to, to figure out, but it's not going to be like a, it's not, gonna, sure. it's not going to set them back a year. No. Oh, I'm not sure because, you know, as we said, it's a fundamental way to how this works. So I, it's hard to say, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I expect that it probably will take them a little bit to sort out, but I don't think it'll delay their, their products too much. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, Apple's one of the most profitable organizations in the world. Yeah. I'm sure they'll find a way. Some of the brightest engineers out there. So, um, yeah, I'd say it'd be unlikely that they're able to create a new fix. But... We'll keep you in the loop. We'll, we'll tell you if there's any um, any drastic changes to their new line of products coming out. <laughs> and uh, Apple will probably come up with a fix that's been in the industry for 10 years and market as a new thing. Exactly. That's a bit of an Apple hater thing. <laughs> <laughs> Something they're good at doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, we'll let you know if anything happens with that. But moving on. So, yeah, the people search engines squirrel. Squirrel? Quarrel. There you go, quarrel. <laughs> I, like, I like squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll just give a little bit of background. So Mo- this was sort of brought to the mainstream attention because Mozilla, which is in charge of Firefox, they if you've ever used Firefox, you've used a lot of their products, they were partnered with this company called OneRep. Now, what it's meant to do is it's meant to help primatize your online footprint. So there are companies that it's their whole job to gather information on people and, uh, you know, if you search in someone's name, it tells you information about that person, their social media accounts, posts they've made, you know, location, if it was leaked online, email addresses, passwords, all of those things. Companies collate that data and they basically sell it to you yeah. and give you a service that lets you search people up. I suppose it's like OSINT as a service. Pretty much. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, OSINT. I'm going to coin that O-S-A-A-S. <laughs> <laughs> New coin term. Yeah. You know, you've heard it first. But anyway, so they were part of this company called OneRep, which was meant to 
you know, take away a bit of that functionality, help you protect yourself online. They found out that the CEO of one rep was actually in the past associated and helping to run multiple of these people search engines. So, you know, that's a bit of a, a bit of a, a conflict of interest there <laughs> exactly. in, in the, in the massive proportions. I suppose some people may say like, oh, well, he will know what to protect against. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's definitely, um, very dodgy. Uh, I think Mozilla did the right thing of instantly separating from the company. Yeah. Because, uh, that's obviously an extreme conflict of interest. They do the exact opposite thing. Yeah. Um, it'd be like if I was uh, a nation state hacker and then I was going to whatever company we were hacking and just saying like, hey, use this to protect against us. Yeah. Like it'd be a complete uh, conflict of interest. Yeah. Um, it would be like selling you a car that's broken and then also setting up a shop. mechanic. <laughs> that's a mechanic, right? <laughs> so you give someone a card saying, oh, okay, here's my business card. Yeah, on the bottom of the business card, it's got a mechanic because the car is going to break in three weeks. I mean, it's not a, it's not an unheard of thing. It's uncyber related. This is something that you know, a, a pharmaceutical industry has been doing for decades. Yes. Where they come up with a certain PED in sports, for example, that yeah. gets past the the testing that's currently being done, and then they develop a test that picks up on that certain PED. Yeah. Um, it's not an unheard of thing, but it's, uh, it's very bad. As I said, I think Mozilla has done the right thing. As far as I'm aware, they could have been more, they could have known from the get-go, but that would be very speculatory. There, there is more to this story as well, isn't there? Isn't there more? Um, yeah, I think a lot of the search engines as well um, were China-based, and they were actually basically working with China to exclude uh, certain Chinese officials and stuff from the search engine. So basically, it was... A, a Western people search engine, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that CEO was associated with those ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely very bad. It's a very morally gray area of the industry because realistically, you could do all the work itself. You could, not, yeah. And OSIN, as we know, is not illegal. OSIN is you're just scouring the the surface web. For information, mm, it's yep. not a legal thing to do. No, um, and I'm not entirely aware if people search engines are gathering um, documents that shouldn't be out there. Well, it's I'm very not, likely, but it's it's likely they're looking through the dark web on uh, data breaches, and data breaches and stuff. Which, looking at that data, is that illegal? Uh, yes, publishing that data would be publishing. Legal. Okay, so yeah, so if they're doing that, if they're looking through finding people's passwords and stuff through the dark web, publishing it and providing it as a service then that you know, that would definitely be on the illegal. illegal side but if they're if they're not if they're just collating social media data and information that's publicly accessible then in that sense you could in theory create an ethically and morally gray area sort of a, like legal service to help um gather information on people but yeah i don't know if they're doing that and i also you know i wouldn't recommend anyone does that in the first place because you know, it's not really a... It's definitely not ethical. Um, no, it's not ethical. Because, you know, OSINT, I use OSINT yeah. from my day-to-day to ask yeah. if I'm developing a phishing campaign for work, which is completely legal because I'm doing it for a company, yeah. and I need to find out certain things that I'm going to disguise is coming from this, I'm obviously going to search that person up, search their job role and stuff like that, and yeah. what they do for the company. Um, and that's not illegal at all, of course. No. Um, but, yeah... I suppose making a tool that anyone can do that is also maybe morally grey. Mm. Um, hard to say. Yeah, it's just like make lowering the the barrier of entry. Yeah, yeah. Because like you and I could very easily OSINT someone and find a lot of publicly inf- uh, accessible information about them and uh, give that to someone else, right? You know, that's that's something that we can do. But if you don't need a you know, someone who's versed in OSINT and cybersecurity, if you're able to just do that yourself, you know, creates a bit of a a bit of a dilemma. Makes it so that there's a there's a bit of a you know, everyone might think that there might be a um like a watch glass uh, looking at them the whole time, make them a bit more nervous about their about them putting their stuff online. Isn't a bad thing. I I think that there's a lot of people that put pictures of themselves and. I've seen so much of this and I say it a lot, but 
Stop posting your kids on TikTok. Yeah, please. kids. Kids is the worst one. Yeah. Um, especially because you know they don't have any say. No, exactly. Um, and you know, as a kid, you obviously don't know what the consequences of your actions. Exactly. Um, and going, going online, and it's fair. It's fine if you want to, you know, privately make videos of you with your kids and send them to your friends or whatever, and make it all private. But you know, there's always just these people trying to become influencers putting pictures and videos up of them doing funny shit with their kids and it it yeah one hand you think ah yeah that's hilarious but on the other hand always in the back of my mind i'm just thinking you idiot yeah so stupid for doing that uh thankfully i'm i think it's getting a little better i've been seeing even like a lot of big youtubes and stuff like if they do post something with their kid they just blur their face yeah yeah um so people are becoming more aware of it yeah especially with as we said the the ever-growing threat of you know deep fakes and AI yeah. and stuff yeah. is a really good. I think we've spoke about it before. There's a really good ad out there by I can't remember who it was, but they basically um, the guy is sitting in a cinema and yeah. they um, up the age of their kid that they're posting online, and then they yeah. just say like, "Oh, this could be you," and blah. blah they basically say like, "Oh, they yeah. took out um, they did identity theft or whatever of their child and stuff like yeah. that." That they were they were showing people that they could take pictures of their video uh, pictures of their children and videos of their children from online reconstruct it into an uh, artificial intelligence like entity make it uh, use a voice to pretend that it's them and you know get them to say certain things do certain things put them in videos where they weren't you know potentially make you know illegal modifications to those videos and you know you have no control because you posted the video and people can just do what they want with ai tools these days yeah. And, you know, it might bite you in the ass 10 years from now that, you know, people could make fake videos of you or your children doing things. And, you know, even if it wasn't like them doing illegal stuff, it could terribly embarrass them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the what it comes down to is that if you're posting yourself online, you, at, at the end of the day, are taking that risk on for yourself. That's right. But your kids don't have a say into that. No. So I would recommend just not doing it. Massively agree. But, you know, back on the topic of people search engines, um, yeah, good on Mozilla for getting rid of one rep. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using their products. Uh, you know, they could just be, uh, you'd say you put it, say you have to put in your name and your address and your email and your phone number to be able to delete all of that data from the, the public accessible internet. <laughs> they could just be going off and selling it to someone. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.